Good morning, Tuesday morning. I have not vlogged in like three weeks. It was holiday season here in Israel where basically the entire country shuts down. And so, yeah, I think I worked one day in the last three weeks, which is kind of crazy and feels highly unproductive. Anyway, jumping back into things, heading now to Sirona for a marathon of meetings, including Gliloat Capital, a couple other meetings with entrepreneurs, and then tonight to Jerusalem to meet Toby Moskowitz, who owns hotels in Brooklyn and who I've been in touch with for you know, a decade or so online, never met. So we're finally meeting tonight to talk about potential collab. It's going to be a fantastic day and a start to a new season. Here we go. Made it to Tel Aviv, parking right next to Sarona. That is a good way to start this short week. Also, I forgot to mention, I pulled an all-nighter last night and my brain is mush and I have important meetings. So that's gonna be an interesting challenge, but starting the day with Gliloat Capital, probably the best performing VC in this country and one of the best in the world. I believe one of their first funds was ranked literally top three returning funds in the world. They're amazing. So I'm pumped to hear what's going on over there. Hopefully get Nofar on camera. Hopefully. And my meeting later on was just canceled. I kind of hate when that happens last minute, but I guess it's good that I'm kind of half brain dead today and I'll be able to call it a short day and head home and rest before tonight's meeting in Jerusalem. Also, it's a beautiful day today in Tel Aviv. Okay, first interview since after the Chagim. This is yeah. the first interview. This is like, I gotta get my, my, my mojo back. You have a back. lot of energy. This is, know? okay, let me tell you something right now. <laughs> this is like significantly lower energy than I am usual, like 80% less energy than usual. Wow. We'll, we'll have a second meeting not wow. right after the Chagim and you'll see that I'm <laughs> much higher energy. Okay, who are you? What's your name? I'm Nufar. First I'm of become. all, I love the name. Thank you. What does it mean? It's a yellow flower. You get that question a lot? No. <laughs> yeah, people don't ask you no fire means? No. But, like when you're outside, because you're doing business around the world, so people never heard that yeah. name before outside Usually of Americans would go and say, oh, that's like no far. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, but, we'll but go with it. it means it. yellow flower. People have no clue what Hill is like. Especially, sorry for the politically incorrect statement, African Americans cannot say hello. Really? They're like, hello? <laughs> and I'm like, just say hello with an L at the end. They're like, oh, okay, I can do that. Uh, yeah, so no anyway. far, yeah. Okay, cool. So, all right, give me your... 30 second elevator pitch of your background because you have quite a background. Thank you. Like really impressive stuff. Give me your 30 seconds. So I'm a 8200 alumni, was working for Deloitte for some time doing business development for startups and I'm working with startups for uh, almost 10 years now. I worked at JVP as an associate doing investments. I worked at Microsoft doing business development for startups uh, and I've also uh, co-founded uh, Israel Tech Challenge. Quite a resume. Thank you. Quite impressive. Okay, fine. Now now let's just jump ahead right now because if you've been watching the vlog from the beginning, you've seen Gliloat Capital. You guys, is it Gliloat Partners? Gliloat, what's it called? Officially? It's Gliloat Capital, Capital Partners. Partners. Yeah. yeah. I knew it was something in between those. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I met those guys early, early on. They're like one of like the secret weapons of the Israeli VC landscape. That's the truth because, you know, you guys are, I'm not going to say under the radar. You're not under the radar, but you're humble. Say yeah. it like that. And by far the best returns out of any VC in this country and one of the best in the world. Yeah, top which is rank. Crazy. That's just crazy. Okay, so you do something very unique at Clilo. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so I'm VP Value Creation. Love it. Um, Love that there's such a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that Andreessen Orvitz were the first VCs that started out this movement of value creation. They understood that it's not enough to just decide who's the right startup to invest in. You right. could actually have to support the company post investments to help them scale quickly. Yep. Um, and that's what my team does. Value creation can mean a lot of things. I know a lot of value creation people who are doing marketing and PR and talent acquisition. Wait, wait I gotta, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut you off right yeah, now sure. because I don't want you to ruin the punchline. Okay. Because it's quite a punchline. Okay. So, you know, we have a lot of mutual friends that are focused on value and, you know, I'm not gonna name names because I don't want to sound like I'm saying anyone's not doing their job. Everyone's doing great things. Yeah. But like you said, value creation generally means opening doors, maybe working a little, but less hands-on, getting my hands dirty and and actually closing deals. Right. What you're doing is something I've never heard of, honestly. And I meet with a lot of VCs. I've never heard of what you're doing because it's 
probably the most important thing for any startup, and it's also a very challenging thing for a VC to do this for their portfolio company. So it's it's pretty incredible. Tell me what you do. So basically, what we do, we do sales. We get uh, the early stage companies customers, which is a game changer, really, because once you have a large scale enterprise on your list, then your evaluation is higher and it's right. easier to raise an A round and you get a validation for the market. So it's really important, but it's also very difficult because most of the early stage startups are based in Israel. Right. They're not in the US, which right. is usually the target market, right. and they don't know how to really sell the product. They're right. focused on the R&D, the development of the product. And what we do, we say, okay, we know it's too early for you to get a VP sales, right? right? Uh, but we uh, will get you customers that will provide you with feedback so you could actually optimize and uh, Iterate. get exactly the Love product it. right. Love so that's it. what we do. So you're an actual team yeah. focused on actual sales. Yes. Can you give me like a, just so I understand the context here, like how many, let's call it, enterprises do you have in your quote unquote Rolodex? Yeah, we work with 900 enterprises, which is crazy. That's insane. Mostly decision makers within the enterprises. Like and you have the, those relationships? Yeah, we have those relationships. Incredible. Yeah. And Reload as, as let's call it a, you know, an investment body is very strongly focused on cyber, correct? Yeah. Okay, so you basically, and, and let's just, tell me if I'm allowed to say this, yeah. that there's news coming out soon. By the time people watch this, the news will already be out. Uh, I'm not publishing this today. I hope. Okay, so I'm not gonna say what it is, <laughs> but you looked, you have basically, and again, I'm, I'm being careful what I say here, I'm walking yeah. on edge, I'm not, we'll, we'll be diplomatic, we'll be careful. You have on the one hand, your incredible companies, and not only your incredible companies, but other companies that you can help, you know, reach, global stages, and you have on the other hand, like you said, 900 enterprises. So you have here is somewhat of a two-sided thing going on. Yeah, yeah. You know what we've realized, and I think you, you, you're an expert in this field, that in order to uh, gain value to our portfolio companies, we have to build relationship of trust with the enterprises. And in order to do so, we actually provide them with actual value. We introduce them and we provide them with information about other portfolio companies, not only our portfolio companies right. in the cybersecurity industry. So, um, so in other words, you, t you tell these enterprises, like we have our companies, but we also have other companies that are in our, let's call it network. And if you're looking, you're quote unquote shopping for cyber solutions, here we'll give it to you on a so silver platter. Now, by the way, it's important to emphasize, there's nothing in it for you. Nothing in it for us. Zero. No, it's just providing value Incredible. to the CISOs that we work with because we believe that that's the only way to really build a relationship. Does your business card say VP value creation? It does. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. I, was, I had a business card, one of my first jobs, my business card said uh, senior evangelist. That was mm. my title, actual title. But anyway, cool. Cool. Um, okay, so this is really, really awesome. Listen, bottom line is like this. There's uh, 300 different ways uh, that I can help. You have to let me know. Anything I can do to help, I, I, I'm a big fan of Google, honestly. Like, I love the guys, love the team. Thank we you. go way, way, way back. I, I'm gonna just give a little shout out right now. Literally, we were, we were just talking about uh, the messaging and the communication of startups, and she's, and, you know, far as like, you know, who's really good? And I'm like, here's this woman, Rashi El Maliak. You should do that. And she's like, I'm meeting her in 10 minutes. And I just <laughs> thought that was hysterical. Rashi El Maliak. By the way, she's not been on the vlog yet, and that is that is a travesty that she has not been on the vlog yet. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna stick the camera in her face when she gets here. Um, but she's one of the top, you know, communication people in Israel. So that's super cool that you're meeting her. Um, but listen, bottom line is like this. It goes without saying. Anything I can do to help in, in any way, honestly. You know, we talked about a lot of things, but even things that we didn't talk about, like, you know, if something pops into your head, you have a challenge, you, maybe Hillel can help, shoot me a, an email. Thank you. And, and the answer is yes, anything I can do. And yeah, I just, it's, it's an amazing thing that you're doing. I think uh, hopefully other VCs, not only in Israel, but around the world, will start uh, replicating this model because writing a check, as you said, is becoming a commodity. People, right. you know, everyone has access to capital. That's not right. what I need as an entrepreneur. You know, I need somebody to write a check and then help me actually win which is a mutual interest right you know, exactly. if you, you close deals for your company the company wins in there but and as by extension you win yeah so yeah, exactly it's, it's quite amazing that other vcs don't do it but i have like you said andreessen as far as i know is the only company like you know i've heard stuart butterfield from slack say like they achieve their success because of andreessen harwood it's not only their check you know that's but the truth is you know i, I will say in, in most of the top tier vcs defense a lot of these guys whatever it's sequoia benchmark you know lightspeed right behind us hmm. excel all these guys like they, they also do a lot for their companies i just don't know of a, a 
VC that has an actual sales team. Yeah, that is very is structured and measurable, right. which is oh, really important. important. Yeah, we talked about how important it is to be data driven. So we collect everything, every interaction, every feedback, so we could actually see if we right. bring value to the table or right. we don't. Is this working? Yeah, actual exactly. measure, which is super yeah. important. It really helps us optimize the I efforts. It. I love it. All right, listen, um, we're gonna we're gonna continue this conversation. You let okay. me know whatever I can do, and okay. some regards to the guys back in the office. And um, yeah, I'm waiting for you to let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you. I didn't do anything yet. Just wait. <laughs> the thing with Tel Aviv, as I've said probably a thousand times, is you walk around the streets of Tel Aviv and you bump into freaking legends. The one, the only, Rashid Malia. First of all, how long do we know each other? 15 years, I think. Right. Very, very much responsible for my career, so I, I'll, I'll always say that and I'll always thank you for it. What's your story? Give me like your 20 second elevator pitch. Setal, Marketing, strategy. What's your website? Setal. Setal, I got that. Look at that. C-O-I-L, very impressive. S-E-I-T-A-L. I -E -I don't really have enough time for my own marketing, so it's kind of a briefy thing. But, but I would say, with, without exaggeration, Rashi's probably one of the top three, maybe number one, branding person in this country. Can we Thank say that? You. Is that okay? You'll take it. This doesn't count. I prefer to market other people than myself. <laughs> this doesn't count as a hangout. We like literally need to put something on the calendar. This is out yes, of control. We should. Like we have not hung out in years. Yes. Not okay. Because we don't have time I, for hanging out. I, I don't we are care. Doing I, don't, I, don't, I don't buy that. They're, they're important. This is important enough. Okay. We, we got to make time. We'll do it. Deal. Now it's after the Chagin. New so Year's we're, resolution. So we're gonna do it. Done. Absolutely. Rashi always fantastic. I literally in the last meeting I said in my last interview I was sitting with fire and I was like she's talking about communication and branding. I'm like you gotta meet Rashi. She's like I'm meeting her in ten minutes. I'm like tell her to get her. <laughs> over here. Anyway, go to your next meeting. This was fun, as always. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks. Okay, this is officially the second, well, two and a half, because I kind of interviewed Rashi, but I was going to say okay. the second interview of After the Chagim. All right. So I'm kind of slowly getting back to my energy levels. You, normally, when we meet next time, you'll see my energy levels are literally <laughs> 80 times what it is today. So anyway, all right, give me the 30 second background. Who are you? What's your story? How did we connect? Hit me. All right, I'm Liat Arad. I came to Israel 10 years ago. I have gone through a career of advertising, marketing, working a little bit in the tech space in social media management. Love and it. all of that brought me to entrepreneurship, uh, running Ramon Design House, which was in the fashion space. And full circle, now I am the VP of marketing at UBQ Materials, which is a sustainability company. Right, wait, 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 wait. Up, Pops, up, slow up, down, up, slow down. Wait. Wait. A lot. Wait, who introduced <laughs> us? Who introduced us? Ah, uh, gotta give a Agam shout out. I'm like All a the shout outs. big Agam fan. Like I love that guy. Huge Agam fan. I, I, I met him only once, like randomly, but like we've been communicating. And he, like he's amazing. He, like whatever. He's just amazing. He's an amazing person. Okay, that's first. Yes. Time. Now let's talk about this company because yes. I see a lot of cool companies. I hear about a lot of impact cool companies. I write about them, but this company is something else. Tell, tell me, yes. tell me the story. Okay, so UBQ Materials is essentially a company that takes all the household waste that's unsorted, unfiltered. That means it's your dirty diapers together with your leftover chicken bones, together with your plastic and your paper and your cardboard, all of it together. All the material that is going into a landfill, we detour that truck, take it to our factory and create a substitute for plastic, a bio-based thermoplastic that is actually climate positive. So production of this material is actually doing the world good. Incredible on like 80 different levels. Like, you know that company, um, I'm trying to remember the name, Watergen? Yes. Like, these are companies that like, it makes no sense for a company like that to be in a country like Israel. You know what <laughs> well, I mean? It's when these, it, it does make sense actually because we're solving a problem that is very right. present for right. us, you right. know, Israel sense. has a lot of... From that perspective, yes. Yeah. Um, but I'm just saying like, when I hear about companies like this, and, and again, because of the column that I write in the J Post, which is focused on impact, I'm hearing about these companies that are just like, you know, I feel like the words making the world a better place has become a cliche. Right. But like, I'm literally hearing about these companies every single day in this tiny little country that's a speck on the map in the worst neighborhood on earth. And they're <laughs> literally just making the world a better place. You're, let, me, yeah. let me just dumb this down. You are taking trash of all kinds yes. and you are basically turning it into a replacement for plastic. It's like win on both ends. Exactly. It's incredible. All right, tell me a little bit about the company. How many people work okay, there? Okay, so right now we're about 35 people, including all of our guys at the factory as well, guys and gals. Um, Very important. Yes. Uh, our current factory is in Selim in the south, and we are opening up a new factory in the States very soon, Love so it. keep updated. Love um, it. We just did a pilot program with the Central uh, Virginia Waste Management Authority, so all of their recycling bins are made with UBQ materials. So yeah. the circular economy of it is beautiful. It's Love trash it. bins made out of trash. 
so. <laughs> love that. Love it. And that, without getting into like specific details, like the company's raised significant capital. It has raised capital and um, will continue raising capital. You'll be hearing more about that soon. Yes. So <laughs> updates to come. What's the website? It's ubqmaterials.com. Ubqmaterials.com. Check it out right there. There's a link. <laughs> Incredible stuff. I, don't, I mean, I don't even know. I'm trying to like, I mean, we, we talked about some cool ideas, but beyond that, if there's, I don't know what I can do to help, but if there is ever anything I can do to help, I'm going to write about you. That's easy. That's a little hanging food. <laughs> I'm going to write about you. But no, but seriously, like, I don't know. You're, you're VP marketing. You know, if there's ever, you want to shoot some ideas off of me, you want to, I, I don't know. Let me know. I mean, I, I, whatever you ask, the answer is yes. I love what you're doing. I, I'm <laughs> thank serious. You, like, I love this stuff. You. Like, discovering new Israeli companies are making the world a better place. It never ends. Unbelievable. So I guess good luck with your with your role and do thank take, you take so me up on my much. offer. Anything I can do to help, let me know. Absolutely. Thank and you so much. Get on much. that article for today. I'm pumped about that. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> so now this is the first time I'm actually vlogging at night with my new Panasonic GH5S. Uh, the biggest advantage of this camera over my old GH5 is night vision. So you should be able to see me okay, although I, on the screen it looks pretty dark to me. Anyway, heading to the Waldorf Astoria in Jerusalem to meet Toby Moskowitz, who owns a hotel in Brooklyn, and we've been communicating for years online and we're meeting to talk about potential collabs that should be interesting also the Waldorf is the most beautiful hotel in Israel so there's that off to Jerusalem nothing quite like Jerusalem at night the air in this city is just unparalleled and just one of the more beautiful streets here in Jerusalem we're at we're on Agron going to the Waldorf it's right near town it's super peaceful here but I think we're passing by an embassy so I gotta put my camera away because they're not very happy about that My favorite place is on planet Earth, Mamila, right there. That's Mamila right there behind us, and that's the center of Jerusalem right there. Not often I get to uh, vlog from here at night. It's so beautiful. If you have not experienced Jerusalem at night, highly recommend it. Just perfect weather, beautiful scene, very peaceful. Big fan, big fan. And the beautiful Waldorf Astoria in Jerusalem. Unbelievable hotel. Okay, this is a meeting, what, seven years overdue? Yes, Hillel and one of his stalkers. Okay, how long do we know each other? You don't remember this, but we met in the home of your uncle, David Fold, many, many, many years ago. Wow. And I've been a follower for a really long time, watching your trajectory. Wow, it's an honor, because I'm reading articles about you all over the press, and you're like, a big deal. Yeah, we all take, yeah, take, take each other with a grain you, of salt. You got some big press lately, you know? Okay, who are you? What's your name? Toby Moskowitz. Have you, have you ever seen an interview? That, I feel like you're, <laughs> you've never seen me do an interview before? No, it's very it's funny. Episode, okay. episode like 300. And like, can you take a picture for us? Okay. Okay. Right. So I'm a, one yes. of the few, I think I'm the only female from developer in the for, city of New York. means religious. People are religious, watching. Religious, yeah. A, I, I actually got my career started here in Israel. Okay. I uh, have a master's in business from Bar Ilan University. You have to, you have to, you have and I got lucky enough to, uh, I was introduced by mutual friends to Michael Eisenberg. Um, the one and only. The one and only. Yep. And he gave me my first break Love and it. introduced me to the venture capital business. And I've been accused of being the venture capitalist in the New York real estate market. And hopefully working with Hillel to continue to grow Israeli companies portion of New York State's GDP. You, you basically just gave away the punchline. I just shut it down. Okay, so let's, let's start again. Yeah, but you get to, yeah, hold on, don't we edit these videos? We like Joseph's Do we edit these Joseph's videos? Joseph's editing. Slow down. <laughs> By the way, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm officially diagnosing you. There's zero chance that you're not ADHD. You looked in the mirror and found your female counterpart. Uh, not even a question. I'm honored. Hyper ADHD. I'm honored. ADHD, I'm honored. no question I'm honored. about it. Okay, back up a little bit. You, yes. You live Is in my Queens. posture good now? Yeah, it's great. You have a, a hotel in Williamsburg. Williamsburg Hotel. Tell me about that a little bit. So I, my family business actually started in, on the Williamsburg waterfront. My grandfather was a Holocaust survivor. He started buying and selling shmatas, which are rags, rags army surplus. Mm -hmm. um, so I had deep roots in the neighborhood. Sadly, he never bought any real estate, but in 2008, I pivoted from venture capital into real estate development. Okay. And I bought a site that was a former scrap metal yard. And we've turned it into a center of tech. Uh, the Williamsburg Hotel, we do all sorts it's of like meetups. It's a big up-and-coming place. It's a very big and up-and-coming place. They called me the Queen of Williamsburg. I like they it. call you the Queen of the King of Israeli Tech. I hope they don't call me the Queen of Israeli Tech. Okay. Don't worry, his wife is watching. It's so, all good. So, <laughs> but she won't be on the vlog. We we're working on it. Okay. Okay. So, tell me first of all, like just in terms of size, how big is this hotel? Like, give me, give me some. We have 150 rooms, uh, about 20,000 square feet of event space. We've hosted oh. some major tech companies who you've worked with uh, event, doing events at our property and Beautiful. look forward to hosting the full family soon. I've invited you a couple times. Amen. I just, I mean, when am I ever in Brooklyn? It's You'll have not to a, come. I'm going to work on You'll it. You'll have to come. Uh, okay, fine. So talk to me a little bit about your vision for technology. Like, I know, it's, 
you want to talk about it? It's too early. You can talk about it. You can talk the about vision. It. So I discovered fairly recently that Israeli companies constitute a fairly high percentage of New York State GDP, which I knew that. Disproportionate, yeah, completely. Something like seven, eight percent. I think you know, anecdotally, if you carve out Israeli tech, just based on what I've seen and people that I know, and you know, also Hillel's work, uh, companies that are opening headquarters in New York, Lemonade, Tabula many others that I Breaks think it's much heart, more yeah. disproportional. You gotta be in the US market and you might as well right. be in New York. Right. And over the last 15 years, we went from being a city where Google and Facebook and, and every tech company, Microsoft had an office to a place where there's actual programmers working and thousands of employees. Most recently, Facebook and Apple are fighting over some space in uh, on the west side. And I have a vision for creating a community of Israeli tech companies in a neighborhood that is known as Bushwick or East Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. um, there are a tremendous number of Israeli entrepreneurs living in Brooklyn. Um, and this is a place where Netflix is opening its first studio. Love it. Um, the blockchain industry has taken hold. There's a whole range of tech companies in the area. Incredible. And I'm hoping to get Hillel reimplant Brooklyn. Well, you grew up in New Jersey. Where you grew up? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Queens. 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 Close enough. Bluecrest, yeah. Close enough. Okay. Brooklyn in your soul. Two things. One, when am I coming? Two, if somebody wants to follow your work, where do they learn more about Toby Moskowitz? Where do they read about you? So you I am like on Instagram. No, but you have like your own. We company? actually have a company website. You don't have your own Toby Google Moskowitz my name. You know tobymoskowitz.com? I actually own it and I don't use it. I, Hillel, could you help me out? What? You know a good web developer? Can we discuss my <laughs> notifications on Apple Watch. Don't, I'm, I'm I can't actually, I have a the Twitter concept. account that I don't use that much. I'm very active on Instagram. Have I touched you anything over the years? I'm very active on LinkedIn. Are you on LinkedIn? I love LinkedIn, but Twitter is like, Twitter's, all right, whatever, topic for another time. So, all right, so. But I give the best tour of Brooklyn, Williamsburg, East Williamsburg, Bushwick of anybody, amazing tech companies, and I look forward to what's your working website? with you. TobyMoskowitz.com. No, what's the live website? What's the company oh, the, website? So the company's website is heritage-equity.com. Okay. We built a beautiful building in North Williamsburg that's looking for tenants right now, 25 can. We have amazing spaces in Bushwick. The Generator, which is a very active Twitter account, actually all about innovation, that we're hosting and events that we're hosting at the hotel and in our buildings. Love it. And um, this right. hopefully is a story. We finally met in person. Yeah, it's Hill long, loves long, meeting his stalkers. Long overdue. You gotta stop calling yourself a stalker. It sounds creepy. Listen, okay. <clears throat> you gotta bring me <laughs> out there. complimentary. You gotta bring me out there. Looking and forward. anybody who's interested in anything to do with the real estate world in New York, specifically Brooklyn, or anything to do with event space or any of the other things that Toby just said, reach out. Do you want to give your email? Toby at heritage-equity.com and any Israeli company looking to expand into the U.S. The Silicon Valley is yesterday's news. You got to be in New York. It's a scoop. Every company in the country, every company in the world has a headquarters in the city of New York. Content production, you know, TV and film is booming. Music, every single industry is nesting and growing Love in it. New York. And it's on that only note, one New York City. This was a great way to end the day. The food here was pretty damn good. You didn't even eat though, but I thought it was pretty good. Steak uh, after the holiday is a little too much. But I hear we, that. we had one little bite. Re I hear that. By the way, his steak really is medium rare. I can attest to it. It was very good. I took one bite. It was very good. Uh, on that note, tomorrow's Pow Tuesday. See you tomorrow.